Spontaneous changes are accompanied by the dispersion or spreading out of matter and or energy with an accompanied increase in disorder. Think of a tidy closet or kitchen naturally getting messier over time. Unless effort is made to keep it clean, it will just get messier. Spontaneous heating or cooling, phase changes and even chemical reactions also have an associated increase in disorder. For example, a hot cup of tea will cool down because the heat naturally spreads into the cooler surrounding air. Or the perfume molecules from a diffuser evaporate and disperse into the surroundings. The second law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy naturally tend to disperse and move towards more disorder over time. Work would need to be done to keep a spontaneous process from happening, to keep the system ordered or to reverse the process. Entropy, symbol S, is a way of measuring the amount of disorder or dispersal of matter and or energy in a system or in its surroundings. An ordered system, in other words a system with little disorder, has a low entropy. While a system with more disorder of matter or more possibilities for how the energy is distributed has a higher entropy. Before we continue discussing the entropy of a system, it's worth mentioning that according to the second law of thermodynamics, which can also be defined in this way, any spontaneous process increases the entropy of the universe. We can write this mathematically. The change in entropy of the universe is equal to the change in entropy of a system plus the change in entropy of its surroundings and is always greater than zero. In other words, increases during a spontaneous process. For a non-spontaneous process, the entropy change of a system is negative. But this is offset by a larger increase in entropy elsewhere in the surroundings, ensuring the universe's total entropy rises. For the three states of matter, solids have the most order or least dispersal of matter and energy, and the lowest entropy. Gases have the highest dispersal of matter and highest distribution of forms of energy, namely heat, vibration, rotation and translation of particles spread across various particles or regions. Gases are the most disordered and so have the highest entropy. The higher the temperature of a substance, the higher the entropy, although this is not necessarily a direct proportionality in every case. Heating processes increase system entropy, and so the change in entropy, or delta S, for the system is positive. Cooling processes decrease system entropy, and delta S for the system is negative. A perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is predicted to have an entropy value of zero. This is because at absolute zero, the system does not have any thermal energy. It is in its lowest possible energy state. Particles have no possibility for any movement or different arrangements and so are in their most ordered state. Particles have no disorder. The absolute entropy value of every substance above zero Kelvin is a positive value since in reality every substance has some thermal energy. Standard absolute entropy values of various substances that is, the molar entropy of substances in their standard states, can be found in tables. Here are some standard entropies for certain substances. Notice, again, all values are positive. The value for gaseous water is higher than the value for liquid water, as expected. The units of entropy are usually expressed in joules per Kelvin per mole. Now that we know about the entropy of solids, liquids and gases, let's investigate the entropy change of a system in physical and chemical changes. All physical and chemical changes are accompanied by entropy changes. The change in entropy of the system is given by the difference in the entropy after and before the change. We can simplify the entropy change of a system by writing only delta S. 
We have already seen that when a solid changes to a liquid, the entropy of the system increases. The change in entropy is therefore positive. Likewise, in other phase changes with heating, that is boiling or evaporation and sublimation, the entropy increases too, and again delta S is positive. Mixing processes, like dissolution, also have an increase in entropy. Solutions have a higher entropy than the pure liquid and pure solid, as the particles of solvent and solute become dispersed. For example, the entropy of an aqueous solution of ions produced when potassium permanganate dissolves in water is greater than that of the solid ionic compound before dissolving. Dissociation, which also occurs in this example, produces more particles and has a net increase in entropy. Entropy is directly proportional to the number of particles in a system. More particles means more ways in which the particles can arrange and move. An increase in the number of gas particles also increases a system's entropy, for example in decomposition reactions that produce gas, and in the combustion of many hydrocarbons. Here we have 6 moles of gas producing 7 moles of gas. The opposite or reverse processes, which involve cooling, or a decrease in number of particles, for example by crystallization, and especially when there is a decrease in the number of particles of gas, all have an entropy decrease. The change in entropy is negative as the system becomes more ordered. The standard change in entropy during a reaction can be calculated using this equation. The sum of all standard entropies for the products minus the sum of all standard entropies for the reactants. In this example, we are asked to calculate the entropy change for the given reaction. Before we start, we notice that 3 moles of gas are being converted to 3 moles of gas. The number of particles is not changing, nor are their states, so the entropy change will likely be a small value based only on the nature of the species. We can look up the absolute entropies of each species in a table. For standard thermodynamic calculations, assume liquid water unless explicitly stated otherwise. Since we are given water as a gas, we must use the value for gaseous water instead of liquid water, according to the equation. Then, using the equation, we need to remember to factor in the coefficients for water and for oxygen, since the entropy values are per one mole of substance. Then, substituting and solving, we get negative 4 joules per kelvin per mole. The negative sign tells us the overall entropy of the system has decreased. It has become more ordered. But the small value tells us there is only a slight change in entropy during this reaction, as we predicted. Entropy, together with enthalpy, are the factors in driving chemical reactions. Often substances tend to be more stable when they have greater disorder. Entropy helps explain why certain reactions, such as endothermic reactions, occur at all. In an endothermic reaction, the products end up in a higher energy state than the reactants. One might think, therefore, that endothermic reactions should not occur, or that they are not energetically favorable, since they require the input of energy. But if the reaction is accompanied by a significant increase in disorder, in other words an increase in entropy, this will drive the reaction, as both the enthalpy change and the entropy change contribute towards the product's stability. The relationship between entropy and enthalpy and how they work together to drive a reaction is covered in the video on Gibbs free energy. Now let's summarize the key points. We learned that the second law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy naturally tend to disperse and move towards more disorder over time. The measure of disorder or 
dispersal of matter and or energy is called entropy. The more ways matter and or energy can be distributed, the higher is the entropy. Spontaneous changes are accompanied by an increase in the total entropy of the universe. For a substance, the absolute entropy of its solid is less than that of its liquid and less than that of a solution of that substance, and gases have the highest entropies. Phase changes that occur on heating, as well as dissolution, reactions involving an increase in the number of particles, especially the number of particles of gas, have a positive entropy change. The opposite processes have a negative entropy change. And finally, the standard entropy change of a reaction can be calculated by finding the difference in the standard entropies of the products and the reactants.